First of all, hello and thank you everyone for coming. Right. Uh, we are here to talk about today of how we integrated and scaled Opinio as a learning management system into a global ecosystem. And when we say global ecosystem, we refer to Nestle. Um, before we start with the presentation, let me just ask you to get a feeling here uh, from your side. How many of you know about Opinio? That's pretty much everyone. How many of you have worked with Opinio already? Okay, a bit more than half. All right, then let us tell you about our experience. Um, if you have any questions, then uh, there will be a Q&A at the end, and there will be time to ask. All right. Now, as you can see, this is a joint effort with three speakers today. We have Mariana Solosana, our global website lead for Nestle Professional. Then to my right, Antonella Severo, who is a product manager for the web CMS at Nestle. And then there's me, my name is Enno Langelotz, and I'm a solution architect from Kokomoa. We have structured our presentation in three parts, and we will start with Mariana, who will give us a little bit of background on Nestle Professional and how they came to meet Opinio. Please. So good. Yeah. good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to be uh, with you here today. Um, it's my first time in DrupalCon. Uh, it's a really uh, a great experience for me to, to see this enthusiasm and this commitment of the community. So more on the business side, I would say it's just fantastic uh, to see this energy and, and the spirit of all that you all have. So I'm going to share with you basically uh, my experience in Nestle Professional as global website lead when it is about meeting uh, Opinio LMS, so why the need uh, came up. Uh, so first of all, what is uh, Nestle Professional, right? So you may think Nestle, Nestle Professional. So basically, it is a division in Nestle that is dedicated to the out-of-home business. Uh, that means all the food and, and beverage that is consumed uh, outside home can be restaurants, hotels, cafeteria, offices. Uh, so be, we basically uh, create, develop uh, products and solutions that can serve all these uh, food service operators. Our main purpose in Nestle Professional is to enable our partner success. What does that mean is we really need and we want to commit to help them grow their business. So what do we do to deliver our promise? So we, we really uh, collaborate very, very close with our customers. So we have different innovation, R&D, technology centers. These are the two main for Nestle Professional exclusively. I'm not going to mention all the different R&D centers around Nestle. As you know, we are a huge company. But for Nestle Professional, these two are key. So the one on the right is uh, basically focused on food and is based in the US. And here, for instance, we invite our customers to work with them. And we have a, a big network of chefs, nutritionists, um, product developers that are there working together with the customers to mirror their operations. So they share with us our challenges. And together, we come up with um, product innovation, product customization, new ideas for, for menu development, etc. On the left, it's really more about beverage. So it's a, a big showroom where we have different beverage systems. Can be hot and cold beverage systems. So we invite them as well, our customers, to, to really try the different systems we have to display different menu, um, different beverage menu. So the key message here is really and it's, it's, it's real, we, we really collaborate very close to our customers. We are a very customer-focused business. Uh, if we do not understand their needs, their pain points, we cannot really uh, help them uh, grow, and that's our main purpose. Another way to enable our partner success is to webin through webinars, through online training. So this industry is very dynamic. As you can see, there are uh, constantly uh, food trends, food trends, sorry, beverage trends, uh, as well as an industry with very, very high rotation of personnel. 
especially after COVID, we saw that the industry was very, very bad affected. So it's very difficult to get people uh, joining as, as chefs, as waiters. Uh, they found other jobs. They found other way of living. So this is why uh, we believe that online training is, is essential and it helps us to, to really uh, collaborate and get closer to, to them. So the need for all of these LMS, as I mentioned, really uh, gets stronger and stronger after, after COVID or during COVID because it was, I guess, one of the industries uh, that was main, most impacted. Uh, so we saw our colleagues in different parts of the world, like in Estle, Mexico, that they actively started to run uh, webinars and workshops and online trainings to help them uh, to help all these customers face this new reality and this shock of not having income, of suddenly seeing the restaurants all shut down. So they started to uh, partner with different, uh, uh, different companies. Also, we, we have uh, established uh, agreements. So they deliver webinars like food safety or takeaway, delivery. So these courses became quickly popular and the team were amazed how quickly the community was growing. So in less than six months, they were having more than 10,000 registered people through the website. At that time, we had our Drupal 7 website. But then this team contacted me as a global website lead and told me, Mariana, we need a solution. We need to have a place where we can store our online trainings, our webinars. Can we do that in the, the Drupal 7 website? So, we were unfortunately not able to uh, have a place with all the requirements because they were telling me, look, we have an audience of chefs, but we have an audience of baristas, and we have also owners of business uh, or a small and, and medium business. So can we have in the registration two paths, one for chefs, one for barista, and that they can update their profile and then we can adapt their learning path based on their level of knowledge. And can we lock courses? Because we don't want them to go uh, to skip courses before taking one. So they came really with different demands that were not certainly uh, covered in Drupal 7. Uh, they told me, or they asked me, uh, we need to email them to tell them uh, about the time the session will start, uh, internal messages to you know, facilitate the, the collaboration. Uh, and many things that you can see here. So we certainly didn't have this uh, ready for them. So what happened? They, they needed something. So they locally develop another website. And what we, what we tried to do in Estle is to really avoid having multiple websites all over the place. So we, we work more towards masterization, ensuring that one master site can be globally designed and developed and then deployed in multiple countries. So these certainly have some benefits that I will show in the next slide for the market, for the country, but it's not really fully aligned globally with our strategy of having a consistent, uniform online brand presence and also for cost efficiencies, etc. So they have one domain name called the Pro to Pro, and this allow two learning paths, one for chefs, one for baristas. Then there's also um, another case in Spain and Portugal where the markets contact me and say, we need to your help. We have to move our current, they did have already some uh, um, academies for, for specifically for baristas, but they had the need to, to move because the, the supplier they were working with uh, was sold to another company and they couldn't deliver any more the service to them. So they asked me uh, for help. We, they told me we could not wait more than three months. We need to migrate this platform to another platform. You tell us which platform, but it has to be a LMS because they had already a lot of functionalities in place. However, we have a key requirement. So again, working globally implies listening the needs of different countries and different needs. So we have to be able to provide them a lot of flexible and robust solutions. So one of the key requirements was we don't want this e-learning platform to be accessible for everyone. We want to use this platform as an added value services for our customers. So only customers that are given a code can access the platform. So we need your help that in whatever platform you are going to propose us, there is the possibility to generate codes 
for the sales team. So then the sales team can go and give these codes to the customers. I say, okay, well, so you know, there are plenty of requirements all the time. So together with uh, our technical partner, Cocomore, we uh, basically start finding options, right, for uh, delivering this quickly to the market. So this is when I met uh, Opinion. This is the title of my presentation. This is where I, I basically discovered the, the amazing it is. And the more I discovered, the more I am fascinating with it because it, it allows a lot of integrations. It's a lot of, it's really uh, out of the box learning management system that uh, is certainly also allowing us to customize uh, the look and feel to, uh, yeah, everything that was asked for the, for the different markets I work with, even the code part, it's, it was able to, to, to do with opinion. So uh, with that, I'm just going to summarize saying that as a global website lead, I constantly need to seek for solutions <laughs> that can be quickly implemented to the market that can generate cost efficiencies and savings to the, to the business, that can be scalable and adaptable. That part of flexibility is very important. And also, uh, as you know, the security element, right? Uh, all the part of compliance and, and security with Nestle, Nestle protocol, right? Uh, so with this, I'm going to pass over to Eno, who will then really explain you more on the technical side or the challenges he faced to, to, uh, to thank, uh, gratefully help us to, to deliver this to our markets. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thanks, Mariana. So we decided uh, we want to use Opinio. There's a real need for Nestle Professional, but now what? Because you certainly don't want to use it in isolation. We are talking here about Nestle. They do have an established Drupal ecosystem. They have had that for years. They do work with their own distribution. All Nestle websites are built on that, right? They have done a great job over the years to create integrations, their custom uh, content components, and uh, security modules, so that it would always, Drupal would always comply with Nestle security standards that are pretty high. Now, what it means normally when you roll out websites, for example, a new master project, something that we needed for Nestle Professional, is you take this distribution, you add your own stuff that you need for the brands, you add your own integrations that you might need for some of the markets, so that you can actually create a new ecosystem for that brand that works worldwide in all languages all over the world. So we are serving right now in Drupal 10 more than, I think it's more than 50 markets actually, with more than 30 different Drupal servers. And now we want to add Opinion to that. How do we do that? Opinion does need to be its own distribution, right? And it needs to stay like that, so it will never be the same website as a market website itself. But we want to integrate it tightly as much as possible. And as Mariana mentioned, of course, there needs to be a common design and layout so users feel at home and they hopefully might not even notice that they are switching between websites there uh, when they use the learning management system. The challenge that we face here is markets at Nestle Professional, they work quite autonomously. They have very different requirements and they have uh, very different needs that depend on their customer basis. Uh, one thing that we're doing in parallel to Opinio is we're developing right now a new private area that we call the customer portal where we want to uh, basically add more specialized service for registered customers so that we can serve them better. In parallel, some markets already had the need to switch to Opinio from their old legacy systems. So we do have a situation where uh, right now, in parallel, we're working with the first prototype market, the US, where we're integrating the customer portal, while other markets are already integrating an opin opinion. And then all other markets basically were waiting for a state where they can pick up one or the two together and actually start integrating them into the market websites. Right? So have this global vision but allow the markets the freedom to choose on their own when they're ready to go with one or the two systems. This then will lead to the second phase, where at some point most markets will be connected to both functionalities, customer portal and opinion. 
And then, of course, we need to bring it all together in a third phase where we say, ideally, at some point in the future, there should be a single sign-on. The two, connected, uh, two portals should connect seamlessly to each other and help each other out with the services. Right? Because when you have that, what you can do then is you basically put a global CRM behind all of that and you can track the users beyond both portals and can actually provide services that are relying both on the courses that we offer as well as a customer portal. So you could invent features where you say, all right, we are having a loyalty program, but we should maybe connect it to some of our training courses because we expect you to know certain stuff, right? Having this tracking, knowing which user did what, and having the ability to track that globally and measure the effects will be a huge step then for Nestle Professional to actually move this forward. And our hope is then to tightly integrate our customer to our service and provide them there with additional benefits. And with that, I'll hand over to Antonella, who will help us talk about uh, opinion more in a general sense. How else is it used at Nestle? Hi, everyone. I'm Antonella Severo. I'm the product manager of WebCMS at Nestle. Global, and what we do is we handle all the solutions for brand websites. So the content management system, we have a distribution on top of that. We handle the hosting platforms, user optimization tools, etc. So while they were going on their journey, my team was also on our own journey um, because we needed to find. We have a lot of uh, stakeholders in our processes. We have more than 1,400 websites. Uh, about two thirds of them are part of like a multi-site situation. So we need to do a lot of onboarding. And in the early days it was possible because there were fewer people involved. But now we're at a point where we need to have guided, uh, some sort of uh, self-service. So we created knowledge bases and documentation and lots of it, but it's very overwhelming to somebody who doesn't even know where to start. So we're like, okay, we have to do something that's more guided, um, uh, lear you know, learning management, system, platform, with gamification, uh, that could also give us maybe some certification so we know who's in the system. Um, so, but we had some constraints. So first we looked at what does Nestle have internally? And they have a lot of things and they're really good. What's the problem? Is you need a Nestle email, you need to be an employee. And we're not gonna get, you know, we're not gonna go through that process for hundreds of people that we hope will be using our system. And also, we didn't really have budget, no to low budget, and even more limited staff resources to undertake this. So little by little, we looked at solutions and we looked at Drupal. And of course, I was familiar already with Opinio. So we're like, okay, let's, let's bring Opinio in and see what we could do with it. Um, so, and, and uh, like Mariana said, it's an out of the box. And for us, that was enough because this is not consumer facing. So, you know, the design that comes with Opinio is good enough for us. Uh, so we started with the agency journey. It's the biggest, uh, the biggest one that we have to do with the most content. And from there, we can pare it down for the other roles. And um, so we started to invite, uh, once we had it more or less done, we invited some beta testers uh, and they provided our feedback. We could see how much time it's taken, if it was okay. Uh, we pared it down a little bit, we tweaked it. And then we kind of made some, some you know, formal announcements, but not too heavily because we still wanted to see how it goes. And you know, some of the results so far, uh, we have 50 people who have completed the course. Um, and what we also found is once we have this platform, other teams, other sister teams are also interested and they're creating their um, courses in the platform and adding to the catalog for internal usage. And our next steps are, uh, we're, we're looking at doing the courses for site owners, project managers, and, and also now that we have experience of what it does, we want to rework the agency uh, framework to make it even better and we have to heavily promote it. So just to give you a peek into it, this is kind of what the interface looks like. Um, and uh, so this was the original one, which was set up with the course presentation, like a slide presentation. But what happened with it is the quizzes and everything is inside. 
And our, in our first pass, everything was catered to agency, so all the language was with them. But what we're realizing is there's a lot of content that is really transversal. And we don't want to be creating con the same content modules. And since this is content that is dynamic, we will have to update it. So we don't want to be updating it five times. So what we're trying to do now is looking at a way to, oh, it's not going on. <laughs> yeah, so oops. we're looking at a way to break out the activities and make the course content um, uh, the same for everybody. So we took out the language that's specific, uh, so we can use those modules. And then in front of it or after it, put the um, descriptions that talk to the role and are the quiz questions that are specific to the role. And this is <clears throat> using the interactive book module. So here um, you can see that there's a lot of activities that you could use. Since this is kind of an MVP for us, we, we did as much as we could to put it in, use some interactive element, but over time, we can start using more, uh, looking at the different activities that they have, because there is like over 50. And then <clears throat> what you can also see is you can see, the user can see their profile, they can track their progress, see what certificates and badges they have already. And we can also see how many users are in the platform, et cetera. And you can see it from all courses. You can drill down to your courses that you want. Um, and you know that's about it. So it's it's been a long journey, uh, but we still have far to go. Uh, we're constantly <clears throat> tweaking it. We're discovering bugs. We're working with Opinio to get some of those bugs fixed. Um, it has been a learning curve. We you know especially what, for what we wanted to do sometimes is like I wanted to be like LinkedIn Learning. I wanted to do this, but um, you have to kind of just play around with it to get where you want. Um, I guess with a lot of customization, you can get to what you want, but again, we're, we don't have a lot of resources, but this, you know, just out of the box, it is fulfilling what we need at this point. So that's, um, that's it. And so if anybody has any questions on any of the three presentations or how to use Opinio, or, you know. Any questions, anyone? Want to use the microphone? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to just read out. Uh, <coughs> just, it might, I wasn't here in the beginning, so you might already have answered this, but how did you do around um, users getting access to this? Was this like open for everyone, or did you have like select a group of users that you want to give access, or did you do it one by one and, uh, you know, self-sign up? How, how did that work? <laughs> a very good question. Um, we actually had different situations that we have to cater to. So at the moment, we had two markets who were migrating from a legacy system. And for them, it was a closed system where they had to migrate all the users over, but it's uh, invitation only, right? So they do not want to have public registration. But this will likely change for other markets who will use Opinion differently. So basically right now, they're asking us, please be flexible and make sure that we can cover all those possible scenarios in the future. Does that answer the question more or less? Yeah. Anybody else? I think we're over time. So oh, so we're over time? Yeah. All right, thank you so much for your attendance. Have a great day.